Bangladesh in uh, January 72 was ground zero of state. So this battle was won. But my feeling is that there is a few battles which remain and a few wounds which are still open in this country which I love so much with all the with all my heart with my heart of young man and my heart of today there is the battle of memory I was so I am so struck by the fact that Bangladesh supported had to uh, ha receive the shock of a genocide there is not so many genocide in 20th century but that the figure of the genocide is not known nobody knows exactly how many victims the pakistani barbary made from april 71 to december uh, end of December 71. Was it 1 million, 2 million, 3 million? Nobody knows. And I, my opinion is that such a situation for a people and especially for the young generation is unbearable in the long term. It was a case for the French people. It was a case for the Jews after the Holocaust. It was the case for, it is the case for the Armenians. It was the case for the Tutsi in Rwanda. A genocide, the dead with deads which are not numbered, not named, is an unbearable situation. A country, it's very difficult to build a country to pursue the adventure of building of the state if you had this big hole of memory. I know that there is a great memorial in Dakar, but it is probably not enough. And that's why I proposed this morning to the Prime Minister, I, I suggested that international community should and it's, it might be a duty for international, international community support a real deep investigation in the heart of all the districts of Bangladesh, of all the families of this country, a huge appeal to witness in order to know name by name if possible, face by face if possible, what this genocide was precisely. <laughs> dead without face, dead without name, dead without number, this is the worst. An international community has a duty to help this country to get out of this situation. And I think that I have a few ideas in order to, to help international community to take consciousness of its own duty. And number two, I had yesterday night a conversation with two great intellectuals of this country. I will not call their name, I don't want to embarrass them. Two great intellectuals, young intellectuals, young, young men, my age when I came in Bangladesh. And they were so melancholic, I felt them melancholic. They told me that at the end of the day, what is our place in this world? What is our card? in the big game of modern politics. What should be our foreign policy? Why should we uh, stand and accept that even our supposed allies, even those who helped us to liberate ourselves, consider us as a sort of appendix of the subcontinent and so on. 
Look, they told me, look at Pakistan, a rogue state, a house of the devil in so many respects, the country where you can kidnap and uh, uh, decapitate an American journalist and they continue to be helped and to be loaned and to be uh, uh, fueled with money by their American brother. Why? The sweetness of Bangladesh? Why the innocence of Bangladesh?